Gear Tasting Radio is brought to you by Imminent Threat Solutions. ITS provides knowledge that empowers individuals with indispensable skill sets to explore the world and prevail against all threats. Right now, as a special thank you for all podcast listeners, we're offering 10% off in the ITS store. Simply use the code GTR to save 10% at store.itstactical.com. Welcome to Gear Tasting Radio, where we offer an in-depth look into the usage and philosophy behind the equipment in our lives. I am joined today by Rob Anderson. Hello. And Jordan Jones. How's it going? And myself, Brian Black, on this episode of Gear Tasting Radio, where we wanted to kind of discuss going beyond the packing list. So it's a topic Rob kind of came up with. We just got through with an event ourselves. Uh, all three of us went, and we all had a predetermined packing list that we were we were told to take. And on that packing list, it not only had required gear, but recommended gear and things like that. And we were kind of discussing that amongst ourselves, and we thought, there's always a list of things that we take personally. Mm-hmm. I think everybody does this, but things that everyone takes personally in addition to that, or yeah. whether those are, if they're on there, they take a specific type of that or something along those lines. So yeah. that's kind of the topic we wanted to address. So, mm-hmm. I mean, just to kick it off, me personally... I always want the ability to start a fire, Mm -hmm. gather water, and, you know, have shelter. Those are kind of big, big three for me, and I take things to supplement that. I mean, before I kind of drill down into that, what do you, are you guys along the same lines or? Yeah. Um, That and the only other thing that I take is I have, uh, like, medical type Mm -hmm. stuff. Yep. But I focus a lot more on first aid. Like I take, I always take like ibuprofen. I just keep that stuff with me on a day to day basis. Mm-hmm. If you get a headache or something like that, but yeah, like what you said with shelter. Like I have an emergency blanket, but I also have like a rain layer. Yeah, you know, because it's it's not like I'm not going to build a shelter out of my rain layer, but I'm going to put it on in case it starts raining because it sucks to get wet. Completely <laughs> agree. Yep. How about you, Jordan? Um, I carry stuff to supplement my ADC type stuff. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's it's normally like duplicates of that or like more improved versions of that so like if i carry a small flashlight i'll carry like a bigger flashlight Mm -hmm. or i'll carry stuff like uh i usually go heavy on food and that kind of stuff be it like uh on normally any event that's kind of like a glazed over portion oh absolutely yeah so i carry some type of food that kind of stuff well especially the event we just did it was you know 12 hours there's no time really to sit down and eat during that 12 hours you just kind of have to eat on the go so mm-hmm. that snacks are definitely important some kind of ghee dunk or something yeah to, my, my two <laughs> honey stinger have. waffles didn't cut it no is that all you brought <laughs> yeah oh god dude i thought i thought i had grabbed like another pack of like trail mix and stuff and oh. i ended up not having it and so it was i had two honey stinger waffles and like three five hour energies so oh man it was we were running running dry you had that freaking what was it crank stuff or what uh, it's called Twe- uh, Tweaker. Tweaker. It's like the, <laughs> I knew it was some kind the of knockoff dr- five hour energy. <laughs> <laughs> Tweaker. God. Yeah, I don't want any part of that yeah. one. I've uh, five hour energy is okay for me, but I don't know. I'm not. I'm more big on calories and not energy yeah. supplement stuff. I'd rather just eat some good protein and yeah, get my energy that way. The uh, beef sticks is something that I've added to like my beef sticks. Yeah, like my packing <laughs> list. Um, Got to have my beef. So sticks. a guy behind me had like a thing of Slim Jims, and at like four o'clock in the morning, that was like the most delicious thing I'd ever seen. It's just like funny story about Slim Jims with a whole thing of Slim Jims. We went on the Scout camp out. Trey was probably like ten or eleven. Wait, no, mm-hmm. no, he just joined Scouts so until eleven. Yeah, yeah, probably eleven or twelve. So. He's sharing a tent with a kid named Josh, and all of a sudden, at like 3 a.m., you know, everyone's crashed out. Yep. Josh, get out of the tent. Get out of the tent. And like, Whoa. 3 in the morning, Trey's yelling for this kid, Josh, to get out of the tent. We're like, okay, what's going on? Like, you know, all the adults wake up, turn on their headlamps, you know, what's going on? I said, 
Trey comes running out of the tent and like, Josh is puking. Oh, no. He had consumed a whole tub of Slim Jims. <laughs> so, like, his dad, who was camping with him, had brought those along because we were doing a hike, too. Yeah. So it was it was probably, like, a good four-mile hike into the place we were mm-hmm. camping and then and, and out. So, you know, we had to pack in everything that we were eating. <laughs> and he brought a whole, like, I'm talking about one of those. Like the display. Like, yeah, yeah like, like a tub. Yeah. Of Slim Jim. He Ooh. ate the whole thing. And his dad didn't even know he had ate him. Oh, man. But, yeah. So he wound up puking Slim Jim all over the tent that night. And, yeah, Trey had to sleep outside the rest of the night. Oh. <laughs> it was I'm gnarly. still keeping him on my packing list, but that's <laughs> gross. And, you know, there's shared tents that the scouts would use, too. Mm-hmm. So, like, Josh wound up having to take the tent home to wash it. And Oof. everything. It's like, God. <laughs> it was pretty funny, that's... though. In hindsight, that was hilarious. Yeah. But, anyway, yeah. It's fun, funny you mentioned beef sticks. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I mean, it was, it was, that's what got me thinking about, I think probably about half the gear I had in my bag with me wasn't on our packing list mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it was just stuff that I know I'm going to need or think I'm going to need. And I think a lot of the stuff I bring is what I think I'm going to need, like med kits and stuff. And maybe I don't need it, but I'm still going to bring it. Oh, I always but, bring medical supplies too, man. It's yeah. just, I, I bring kind of two phases of medical equipment. Usually I'll have like a boo-boo level kit, you know, mm-hmm. just cuts and scrapes and bruises and stuff to patch that up. But then I'll also have stuff to treat traumatic injury too. Yep. I always yep. make sure I have a tourniquet and at least at the bare minimum pack a combat gauze and a tourniquet. Like mm-hmm. that's my, that's my lowest common denominator there for that kind of equipment. And I've gotten to situations where, you know, space was in a minimum and I had to really save weight and, mm-hmm. you know, take for instance that, uh, the mammoth sniper challenge thing that I went on, like every ounce counted, man. Right. I was saving yeah. ounces wherever I went. And, um, I had a pack of combat gauze, gauze folded up in a, a tourniquet. And that yeah. was, I even took the rubber bands off the tourniquet. I mean, it was like yeah. trying to save as much ounces as everywhere. So, yeah. But yeah, it's just, I think those, I think for me personally, I think it's, it's really kind of looking at it from a survival perspective too, especially in an event I'm going to be out for a long time. I want to mm-hmm. know that if something like worst case scenario, I get lost or, you know, something like that happens. I want to, I want to know cardinal direction. So I've always got yep. a compass. I want to be able to start a fire. So I've, I've typically got all that stuff covered in a little survival tin I carry. Sure. So I've got the ability to start fire and signal and, um, I've, it's, I've got a little knife in there to, you know, everything that I need to gather water is in there. So yeah. kind of basic survival stuff is in there. And I supplement that with some paracord and a, uh, like a survival blanket for mm-hmm. shelter too. Yeah. So well, like paracord kinda, is one of those things that I'll always take. Yeah, it's ubiquitous. I mean, I'll do. I, I'm doing a firearms training class. There's no reason for paracord. There's no yeah. paracord on the list. I'm still going to bring it. Yep. Because you just never know. Sling um, breaks. You got to rig it up. Right. Yeah. You never just know anything. And I like what you said, Jordan, about like supplementing your EDC. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, the stuff I'm always going to bring might be part of my EDC. Like I'm always yeah. going to have a knife on me. You know, I'm always going to have. Um, you know, the whatever's in my wallet, mm-hmm. if you got any type of entry tools or stuff like that, because you never know what you're going to run into. And, um, you know, something we ran into on this one was we didn't know if it was going to rain or not. Yeah. So, like, being prepared for mm-hmm. that and, like, having your stuff in dry bags. And, I mean, you might be going on a summer day that's 80 and sunny, but it doesn't hurt to have a dry bag. Mm-hmm. I mean, they weigh almost nothing. And that's you keep your stuff and that's it. a very important consideration that I do no matter what the packing list is. I make sure that I either one have something to put everything in mm-hmm. to waterproof it if I have to, but if I've got the space and the weight allows, I'll make sure it's waterproof before it even goes in my bag. Yeah. So yeah. clothing will go into a waterproof bag before it goes into my bag, you know that kind of thing. So and you know now those like sill nylon yeah. Roll top bags yeah. are so lightweight that it's just it makes no sense to not have those kind of things. I mean, you so. can hobo it with like a yeah. a garbage bag. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A contractor bag or like a um, what do you call it? The food not trash compactor say, bag. Yeah, trash compactor use, bag. Yeah. Say food processor. <laughs> <laughs> a food processor bag. Another thing that I I always carry is a headlamp. Yep. Even if yep. I even if it's a daytime activity, and I mean I carry a flashlight every day anyway, but I think the headlamp is just so helpful. I love the Princeton Tech one I have, too, because it's got the red. Yep. I, all through that event we yeah. did, it was all red lens for me when I could. Yeah, those those Princeton Techs are, I forget what they're called. It's not the... It's the Remix. Remix Pro. That's mm-hmm. what it's called. 
I love them because they've got two different levels of LED yeah. for the color that yeah. it is, whether that's red or whatever you choose it to be. <laughs> and then if you hold down the button, it goes white light and it's really bright. So yeah. I like those a hell of a lot. It takes a 123 battery. They're probably the best headlamp I've ever found yeah. out there. I used to use, I used to swear by those little uh, e lights from Petzl. Petzl, yep. yes. And those just are not bright enough. Right. Like I've learned over the years that. While they may save space and they're lightweight and they're super, uh, you know, they, the battery in them last 10 years or whatever they quote, sure. they're just not good right. in terms of Being having enough see. light well, to be able to see. Well, because its only job is to light something up. And when yeah. it does kind of like a mediocre job of lighting it up, it's like, yeah. yeah. Well, if all you need is like a map light, they're perfect. Yeah. Right. But if you're doing more than reading a map right in front of your face, you mm-hmm. really can't navigate with one. Yeah. So I think those were designed mostly for like inside the tent. Like yep. I got to look inside yep. my bag type stuff. Not and they're great for that. Yet. Yep. Yeah, and they're they're nice too because you can clip them on a hat brim as well. So, mm-hmm. but I just I like the ubiquity more of the the Princeton Tech lights. So yeah, they make the AAA. AAA mm-hmm. one. I have a, that one. Yeah. Yep, yep. It's three AAAs, which I I like, um, and they're cheap too. I mean, I, yeah. I don't remember what I paid, but I don't think I paid more than like sixty dollars for the mm-hmm. one I have. Um, and I actually just throw it around my neck like yeah. that whole time we were. Doing, I just wear it around my neck, and then. If you need it, you just click it on. If you don't, it just sits there and it's comfortable. I I think that when I looked back at getting a AAA one, the white light lumens weren't as yeah, good as good, as good on the not, AAA yeah. as they were on the 123. And I think that's the reason I stuck with yeah. the 123. So well, and that that's a good point too because I ended up supplementing that with my handheld streamline. Right. Because if which I, need I had that in the event too. An oh yeah. shit white light. It's yep. like you know hit it, but. Yep. Yeah, so I have a little squeeze light that's in my survival kit mm-hmm. that I have, and that's white. And then I had my stream light, regular flashlight that I EDC all the time with me, and then I had the, the headlamp. So that's what I had as far as lighting went. But what do you? What else do you carry, Jordan, when you're talking about supplementing EDC? So I normally carry like a uh, a booboo kit level thing, just like you were talking mm-hmm. about, and I'll carry a tourniquet like i got a tourniquet in my back pocket but uh just to supplement that like i'll carry more since i'm like a sniffling little bitch all the time <laughs> <laughs> i carry like a uh, flow nase spray and uh just different like little boo kit meds that kind of stuff yeah and so i'll supplement my bottom line like i want to stop like traumatic bleeding stuff with more like mundane things that i have the room and space mm-hmm. so why not bring it yep and so uh, the same thing like i'll I'll wear clothes, but I'll carry supplemental clothing like a rain jacket and, sh- and stuff like that for my shelter. And it's mostly just bouncing off, supplementing what I already carry. So I'll carry a pocket knife, I'll carry a bigger knife, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And I always have things that I try to have things that do double or triple duty yeah. too. So, like the chapstick that I carry, I've started carrying now the brand of like the the hand lotion type stuff that I put on mm-hmm. is the same as. The chapstick it's just in a different it's just in a tube form rather yeah. than yeah. um the like the lotion bar thing and, yeah because my hands dry out like crazy they crack and i yeah. get um what do you call it like split fingers you know, split finger stuff yep. on my finger and i hate that it just i can't stand getting that so i'll use that chapstick to put on my lips and my fingers and stuff to stop i started that doing too. that with the burt's bees stuff i carry yep. i don't know if it's for that but mm-hmm. i mean i was rubbing it all over my forehead <laughs> this last weekend <laughs> whatever snake oil yeah <laughs> yeah you don't like that right you think that it dries yeah. it dries people's lips yeah. out so right? the alcohol based chapsticks scheme. they definitely do that's like yeah. chapstick the brand uses alcohol in there and yeah. it's been proven to dry your lips out so it's like you get in the cycle yeah of chapstick you just look like yeah. some fucking baboon ass on your <laughs> yeah face. right yeah my cycle is more just the the repetitive nature of it like right. i reach into my pocket and i feel and i'm like oh i probably need to put some of that on right. so it's like it i get yeah. into that that repetition not yeah. necessarily but but that's a must-have like i bring that yeah no whether yeah, whether i'm in the cycle or not yep. i need it <laughs> yep i need it that's, I that's need a it. drug addict phrase <laughs> right there <laughs> I, need I, it. I need my i need my lip balm i need my tweaker <laughs> But yeah, um, I've always got a compass too. Yep, I always yeah. swear by a full size good compass to take. Um, you know, something that's got a mirror on it, and I trust. Mm-hmm. That's kind of my my big thing too. I always take that. I always take pace count beads. Um, always have. Those are you know. Always have a protractor 
because even if I don't have a map, I have a protractor. So if I can source a map yeah. somewhere yeah. where I'm at, I've at least got the means to yeah. to use MGRS to get around. Because most you know most quad maps now from uh, what do you call it? The USGS. USGS. Thank you. Um, always have have the lines now to use with mm-hmm. with MGRS. So. Right. That's that's a big one for me is navigation. I hate being lost and yeah, yeah. Never want to be. I always try to bring duplicates of stuff. Like if I'm, uh, we brought a hydration bladder on the last one, but I also yep. brought a water bottle yep. because I'm always afraid. Like my, if the bladder bursts, that's yep. it. That's yeah. all the water I do you that had. Too. Yep. And same thing with the bottle. Like if you drop the bottle and lose it, you know you at least have what's in the bladder. Um, and. An empty water bottle can be used for a ton of different stuff, too. One thing I kicked myself for not bringing that I always bring on this last event, kind of some lesson learn type things, mm-hmm. is I always carry a hanky with me. Yeah. Um, just because yep. I either blow my nose with it or have to wipe something off with it. Like, that's a big thing for me is having something like that. And I didn't have that, and I regretted it. Yep. And then also, what was the other one? So I think it was along the lines of water that we were talking about. That was the other thing. We didn't have the ability to get water other than you know by means of boiling or yeah. you know, gathering water so the nalgene sat empty and right. i hate that like oh i gotta transfer some water from yeah. my bladder to yep. put into my nalgene to have something to rinse my hands off with because i didn't bring any hand sanitizer that was the other thing yeah i was in the same so boat. yeah i should have brought hand sanitizer and i didn't which was a mistake i always do that yeah but yeah for so, some reason i just did not think of it off of um John Hurth's article that he did on like combat tracker EDC, uh-huh. um, he his recommendation was to always consume water from the bladder first. Mm-hmm. So that's something that I've started doing. So I noticed like toward toward like two three o'clock in the morning, everybody was empty on their bottles, and we didn't have anywhere to fill. But I was just now opening my Nalgene because like I drained my bladder first, and so that yep. was kind of. Well, see, you did the smart thing and actually filled up your Nalgene. Yeah. I just brought the oh. empty <laughs> Nalgene, which was dumb. I should have filled it up, but yeah, lesson learned. <laughs> yeah, I've been I I've but been yes, carrying great point two consume. Nalgene's mm-hmm. uh, on like an EDC basis, which mm-hmm. has been really helpful. Because I always, if we're out at a restaurant or something, I can always just bring an Nalgene. I've also started taking an Nalgene everywhere, and Dude, nobody I've says got, anything. I've got so many Nalgene's that it's not even funny. Yeah. So I keep one in the fridge at home. I keep one in my vehicle, and I keep one uh, in my bag. Yep. So and then I have one at the office. Never gonna run out. So there's four. There's, That's good. Like I have one everywhere. Yep. And I just started keeping the one at the office at the office because I used to use, just, you know, pull it out of my bag and use it all the time. Yeah. But what would happen is I wind up drinking that during the day. And then yep. when I'm out and about and I'm just with my bag, I don't have any water because I drink yeah. it all or some yeah. stupid crap like that. So, yeah. yeah. Always do that. And then I've actually got water in my truck, too. Like I've got a big That's good. water container in there that I switch out from time to time. Because it's nice to not have to rely on there being a filling place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, if you can, I'm sure that we could have found a way to fill up with, you know, potable. Is that, am yes. I saying that right? Potable yeah. water. I think you said potable, potable, potable. before. Yeah. yeah, potable is what I say. Well, you don't cook with pots and pans, so <laughs> I mean, you can see how maybe I got to the. That's like my. That's like the logic that I'm up against with me saying bow line instead of bowling. Yeah. Like it's, yeah, it's made. It's made yeah. to go off the bow of the ship. Like that's it's. It yeah. doesn't just change pronunciation. It doesn't matter though. People will still fight me. I'm sure, sure. it's okay. Deal with it. Yeah, we talked about <laughs> cordage. Um, the other thing that I've started to keep is uh, like a little repair kit, mm-hmm. and in that I have dummy cord, paracord, rubber bands, um, a lighter, a little pair of scissors, and then some tape. Yep. And that's that's been super helpful. It's manly to sew, dude. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> It yeah. is, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I sewed up the, the pants I wore to the event. Yeah. I've had these REI pants for like five years, and like they everything has broken on them at some point, and I have stitched it back together, mm-hmm. so they're running on borrowed time. But, <laughs> yeah, I have a, a little um, a watch strap changing tool, hmm. which is super useful for, like, if you're threading uh, paracord through a zipper. Like, it's really hard sometimes to get paracord through the housing of that zipper. Mm -hmm. But with Mm -hmm. the watchmaking tool or the watch strap changing tool, it's got a little fork on it. You can basically just force the paracord through. Uh, Same thing with molly and stuff. You know what needs to happen is, have you ever seen, for sewing, Mm -hmm. there's like that little, I don't know what what it's called, but it's, it's kind of like an, it's got a circular part to it, and then it's got a, 
It's for threading through mm-hmm. a button yeah. or something. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's got a, that little metal like piece. Like a needle threader, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, I guess that's what it's, it's called. It's always got some dude's face on it. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what it is. Someone needs to do that on like a larger scale, you know, to do. Or like to, zippers yeah, and stuff. Yeah, put paracord through zippers. Because I change, that's one of the first things I do when I buy new gear. If it doesn't have just regular 550 paracord around the zipper, I cut it and put in regular 550. When I, when, like that. Whenever I'm fusing that, when I cut paracord, I always like use my fingers and put it into a, t- a like a point mm-hmm. i'll kind of form the yep the molten paracord yep. into a tip yep so you, you know, can kind of help through thread a little it. easier yeah. but yeah i keep that little repair kit now because it, it doesn't weigh anything and having extra i think i had dummy cord yeah I, that you I used you, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then rubber bands are always helpful yeah for riggers rubber bands are huge yeah. to have Yep, that and some i carry like a little mini roll of gorilla tape yep it's yep. like that little a little mini roll I, for this last thing, I put tape on everything. Like I had mm-hmm. tape on a Sharpie. I had tape on those oh, little fiber energies. Yep. And we ended up using almost all of it. So it was good to have that. But like you said, the dual purpose, not necessarily just having an entire roll of tape, but like putting it around stuff like analogy and things like that. I've Super even seen helpful. people use, you know, 100 mile per hour tape or duct tape or something to, I think I think Daniel posted something like that on our muster group, but they used it to... To pull together a wound, it was so, yeah, it was like a so basically uh, you took steri strip. Yeah, so basically, yeah. well, it was different than a steri strip. I mean, yeah. same concept, right? But you know, you took two pieces of duct tape on either side of the wound, mm-hmm. and you kind of folded over the piece of duct tape so it stuck to itself. And then in that, you know, on either side of the wound, you'd you'd basically crisscross needle like and thread a stitch, right? so it pulled that yeah. wound together. Like a corset, yeah, that's exactly. cool. Yeah. Interesting, kind of a neat idea. Yeah. That's the first time I'd seen that done before, so. That was a that was an interesting tip in there. Yeah, yeah, and then you know shelter stuff. I think I've built plenty of shelters with those survival blankets, so mm-hmm. I'm pretty confident in my ability to build with one of those. So yeah. I just take like a, a rock on each of the corners, mm-hmm. well, multiple, not only in the corners but in the middle too, and then I take a piece of paracord and wrap it around the rock so it makes kind of an anchor point. Mm-hmm. And then I'll take a, I'll make a stake out of a piece of wood or mm-hmm. something like that to, to anchor in the corners or bear or wrap the paracord around a rock and bury it or something like that for, yeah. but, uh, that's always worked out really well for me. Yeah. And I try to scale stuff as much as possible. Like you said, like if it's, if you, if you're trying to shave ounces, you know, you can really figure out what you can go without, but I'm always going to tend to like overpack because mm-hmm. I would rather have something and just like. You know, we've talked about before getting back and, you know, make your three piles of like, I used it, didn't use it, Mm -hmm. didn't use it, but might have to. And I keep finding that, like, one of the things I keep bringing that I forced myself, I'm not going to bring it anymore, is that source bladder filler for, like, water bottles or a hose. I have never used it. (laughs) And I've never been in a position where I can't just open the top of the bladder and point a hose into it. So it's like... And I it's really, it. it's really an annoying piece of crap yeah. too. Like it always shoots off. No the offense, hose. source, but yeah. you know, it's like I get it. It's just not. Yeah. yeah. And every time I've used it, people have always come up and been like, "Huh, that's neat." Yeah. But it's not like you couldn't just yeah. drop your pack and take five seconds to open the bladder. Yeah. So like, I think we were talking. I think it's that whole thing was designed for like body armor. Sure. And like right. filling it off right. like water bottles off body armor. And it so works great in it. that purpose, but like I'm just not using yeah, it for that. So knee deep in Granada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's, those are the kind of things that I, I just finally like, okay, I'm not bringing this anymore. Mm-hmm. And then of course that'll be the one time I need to use yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. That's how it always goes. Yeah, and then I always take a change of socks. I yes. always have that. That's huge on my list. And Luco tape treat blisters that's always with me that kind of goes along with the boo-boo stuff but yeah um I but it's make good sure, to have yeah i always make sure i have those and alcohol wipes and gold bond like that's a big thing for I'm me i'm adding too. gold bond yeah because i saw you applying gold bond and i had a moment of like oh man it was a slim jim moment when i was my feet when i was dumping it down my pants or putting it on my feet <laughs> no, I, it was on your feet yeah <laughs> just kidding because you like you like put it in the sock and i was like oh that's such a good idea yeah no i like that whenever i do a sock change i always take gold bond and put it all over my feet it's just kind of it helps dry out the dry out your feet too. Yeah. So I think that's like one of the best things about actually going to any event mm-hmm. is not only like you get like instruction on whatever, but you can also learn just by looking at what other people are doing, and yep. you can yeah. learn different things like the the gold bond. I learned about like maybe I should bring dummy cord next time, mm-hmm. and so you can pick up like almost as much helpful stuff just by looking at other people as as you get from the instruction. Yep. Yeah, like when we were 
breaking down the firewood, you didn't have a good 90 degree on your knife. Yeah. 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 Or did you? No, I used uh, the striker. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that was... I well, like that, too. No, oh, no, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, for your more knife. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. We saw the benefit of a bigger knife, too, when we were breaking that down, because I forget whose knife we ended up grabbing, but it was like having that full-size blade and being able to hammer it down mm-hmm. through the wood was great. And I like I carry that Izula, too, and I don't know if I would have been able to, to do that as effectively. That's why I like that blade. more of a fire knife. It's, it's probably my favorite knife, yeah. just because... Even though I broke down all that that stuff with it, it was still super sharp even oh, yeah. after that. Yeah. Like it just holds a really good edge. It's got the nine degree on the on the spine yep. to strike a ferro rod with, and also to you know scrape wood to, to make uh, you know, tinder and things yeah. like that. So mm-hmm. it's just super versatile. I just don't. I'm not happy with the sheath, but I do like the fact that it's just a clip right. that I can take off my belt if I need. As and the I molding need to. on the sheath is nice. Yeah, I mean, it's not retaining bad. Retaining the knife and yeah. all that kind of stuff. It's easy to index back into the sheath too, which I yeah. like. So, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of pros to that. It was actually still pretty sharp after cutting through the tin. Yeah, that's too. right. Yeah. yeah, we were cutting through like tin cans with it too. I'm which still having like hearing <laughs> flashbacks of that. Like that's the nails on a chalkboard. It is. It is for me when I'm listening to it. But if I'm the one doing yeah. it, which I was, it yeah. was okay. But. Like when some when I saw oh. somebody else was doing it, I was yeah. I like cringe because yeah. I was like they're gonna cut their finger. Ah! <laughs> it's like I just yeah. imagine that tin going like yeah. slicing right through their finger. That's like one of the worst things for me is is thinking about the cut. Yeah, I can look at cuts all yeah, day sure. long, but like it's thinking about someone getting cut is like right. oh, God, that's gonna hurt. <laughs> it's gonna take forever to heal. <laughs> I always um, pack gloves too. Yes, no matter what I'm doing, yeah. um, and I've had a lot of like when I'm doing a class or something, I'll wear gloves to be realistic. Like Mm -hmm. if I was wearing gloves, like, especially if you're doing firearms training, like it's totally different feeling and things like that. I hate wearing gloves when I'm doing firearms. I do too. But you know, it's one of those, like if I'm going to wear them Mm -hmm. realistically, then I should probably know how to shoot with them if I'm going to wear them. (laughs) I don't, yeah, I don't think like that. I, I like to use gloves as like a supplement when I'm doing certain activities. My Mm -hmm. problem is I just forget to put them on. So like I'll have them and I bring them and it's always usually part of my packing list. But like when we, I was cutting that tin can, I didn't have gloves on. I had them in my bag, like two, two feet away from me, but I should have had them on. Sure. And it just, I don't know. I just never take the time. It's like, I get so laser beam focused on whatever I'm doing that I just neglect that. And something I need to work on too is the compartmentalization of the bag. Mm-hmm. Cause what I'll do is like prior to this event, I had all my stuff packed in all its nooks and crannies. Mm-hmm. And the first time I needed to grab something, it was at the bottom of the bag. And it, like everything was a gypsy camp from that point on. Cause it was like, I just plunged my hand directly into the bottom of the bag, pulled it up, messed up all the organization of everything that was in there. And then from then on, it was like, where's this? I don't know. That's why I, I, I like Alice packs in like bucket style bags is mm-hmm. because it's like if you if you don't if you don't yeah. compartmentalize it, you never have to worry about right. it. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think like versus like a clamshell is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. I think the good thing about clamshell is because my one problem with bucket style bags is I'll forget I have stuff. Mm-hmm. And then yep. I do that too. I won't even just like the the gloves. Like I'll for, totally forget I have it if I don't see it and everything's so hidden in a bucket style bag. So it's kind of mm-hmm. like a a cost versus benefit thing. I started doing that on my vehicle bag is I have like a little card that says what's in it. Yeah. Cause I would run call. into that same thing too of like, I need a spoon. Yeah. Oh, I don't have one. Well, look at the little yeah. inventory list you have. It turns out mm-hmm. you do, or like, you know, a lighter or whatever. But cause I'm, I'm, you know, unzip that bag to go through it one day yeah. and I'm like, Oh, that's where that is. <laughs> I yep. didn't know that was in there. I've done that before plenty of times. <laughs> yeah. I, I like those lock sack bags yeah. or a lock sack. However you, say it but i like them because they're clear i can see what's in them it's waterproof Mm -hmm. and i like i like that you can squeeze all the air out of them and they stay compressed yeah so i i like using that for clothes um or or i use those sill nylon bags i was talking about before it just depends like i'll use those more when i have a lot of stuff if it's just a jacket and like a Mm -hmm. pair of socks or something i'll use the lock sack bag but yeah um just because it's easier to see what's in it. And I find that that helps me with organization too, is that multiple bags with those lock sack bags in different sizes help me not only be able to see what's in that particular bag, but it just makes it a little easier to sort through stuff when, sure. I'm, when I've got the clamshell with the bag yeah. open. So yeah. it's like the a benefit of having like a bucket style bag where you don't lose a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the boon 
of having a, <laughs> a clamshell where you can see everything. Yeah. Yeah, well, that is uh, going beyond <laughs> the packing list. I think we did that. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Gear Tasting Radio. As always, if you have any questions, use the pound tag Gear Tasting and look for our episode intel on the article on itstactical.com. Remember, if you like what we're doing, please subscribe, rate, review. We'd love to know what you think of the podcast and tune in every Tuesday for a new episode of Gear Tasting Radio. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>